Section 11 of Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House, edited by Olive Bupre Miller. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Brooklet Story The silly little brook awoke and opened its eyes to the sun in the world. Oh, how do you do, said the sun, laughing as the silly little brook blinked its eyes at him. Who are you? asked the silly little brook. I never saw you before. Of course not, said the sun, laughing more than ever, because you have never been awake before. Come now, it is time for you to get to work. You have been a long time asleep. Look back of you. The silly little brook did just as the sun told her and looked back of her. I don't see anything, she said, except a black hole in the ground. Of course you don't, said the sun, because that is all there is to see. You have just come out of that hole where you have been asleep all your life. Now, look ahead. The sun said this so loudly and stared at her face so long that the silly little brook began to feel quite uncomfortable. So she winked and blinked and said nothing. Look ahead, commanded the sun sharply, and this time she obeyed. There was a tiny wee little stream of clear white water trickling away like a thread down the mountain. It was the silly little brook. Now hurry, said the sun. By this time he was very fierce, for his face had been getting rounder and bigger every minute. And set to work, for you have a great deal to do. Be a useful little brook, and don't stop on your way, but make everyone glad that you woke up. Good day. And the silly little brook felt her feet give way before her, and in a minute she was slipping and sliding down, down the mountainside. I'm not going to be sent down in this fashion, she grumbled, as soon as she could catch her breath while she rested a bit in a hollow. I shall choose my way and what I will do, and I am not going to work all the time either, and the cross old son need not think that he can command me to do it. I am going to play as much as I want to. With that, the silly little brook rested in the hollow all that day, and the next, and the next. The first day, the birds came to see the silly little brook, and they sang sweet songs over her head, and they told her pretty stories, and they dipped their beaks in her clear little pool of water in the hollow. And the silly little brook said to herself, Oh, what a beautiful time I am having. How glad I am that I didn't pay any attention to what the cross old son said to me when he told me not to stop. I shall stop here as long as I please. And she did. And the next day, the birds came and everything was pleasant, and the silly little brook went to sleep at night and dreamed of all sorts of beautiful things. But the day after, she looked up and saw to her astonishment a flock of birds that was whirring along over to the top of the mountainside. Pause when they came to her and looked down. Then they whispered together, and presently off they flew, twittering, Oh, no, no, we'll not stop there. What to make of it, the silly little brook did not know. She only rustled and grew angrier and angrier, and said that she did not care. But... She went to sleep, crying as hard as she could that night, and her pillow, a clump of moss, was wet with tears. At last, as morning broke, the silly little brook heard a voice close to her ear saying, Oh, dear brook, wake up. I have something to say to you. And there was Robin Redbreast. The silly little brook at that opened her eyes. What is it? she said sadly. The silly little brook at that opened her eyes. What is it? she asked sadly. Don't you know why the birds are flying over your head to seek other streams without so much as giving you a gentle word, and no one remains to tell you the truth but me? asked the robin. No, I don't, said the silly little brook. Tell me, robin. Look at yourself, said robin redbreast. 
So the silly little brook turned her eyes to look at herself in the little hollow where she rested. And lo and behold, instead of the clear white water with only the shadows of the violets to color it, well, there was a dark, dirty pool of water with a little green scum coming all over the top of it. Why, where have I gone? And screamed the silly little brook. That is not I. Oh, yes, it is, said Robin Redbreast. You have turned into this ugly pool because you stayed still. Oh, dear brook, why did you not obey the good sun and go on? I will now, said the silly little brook, bursting into a torrent of ripples, and she tried to start. But her feet were all tangled up in a mass of leaves and green weeds, and she could not move an inch. I'll help you, said Robin Redbreast kindly, and jumping down, he picked patiently all the sticks and leaves he could in his bill and carried them out of the way of the silly little brook so she could once more start to run down the mountainside. But as fast as he picked the leaves and the sticks out of the way of the silly little brook, ever so many more would come blowing down from the trees and choke up her course again. So at last poor Robin Redbreast had to sit down, quite tired out, and declare that he could do no more. Then the silly little brook began to rush about and cry more loudly than ever, and the sticks and the leaves flew around her thick and fast, for it was a very windy day. The birds flew over her head, never so much as giving her a glance, and it was very dreadful indeed. The silly little brook mourned, and the wind in the trees sobbed above her. Robin Redbreast let his head droop on his pretty red bosom. But suddenly he hopped up, and he trilled out loud and clear while he flapped his wings. Stop crying, dear brook. I will fly and bring some help. For he had heard what the silly little brook had not been able to hear, the notes way up in the sky of some little birds that he knew. So off he flew, post-haste, and back he came with a whole troop of robin redbreasts who were on a journey together. There were so many of them that they picked out every stick and leaf before the new ones had a chance to choke up the way, and pretty soon, start now, they twittered. The silly little brook started. Then away she went, slipping and sliding and trickling and running like a mad little thing down the mountainside. Don't ever stop again, called every one of those robin redbreasts after her, but go on and on and on. End of section 11, recorded by Anna Holly, August 24th, 2012.